Good morning. We need circus music during the break in here. In my, in my head, we have it. <laughs> it plays all the time in my ears. Also, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey is not here in a prosecutorial sense. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. If it's uh, you want to have a circus, it should be the ringleader, Rob. Well, we've it's always good to be the ringleader, right? Often discussed, unless the tent collapses upon you, we've often discussed that the uh, the in between show breaks probably should be aired as well because they can be quite comical or not, but they should be aired <laughs> either way. And just as I was talking about, the, the real thing here is the chair arrangements. There's nothing yeah. more stressful between one group going out of the studio mm-hmm. and the next coming in than what chair somebody's going to sit in. And you've only got like four <laughs> minutes to figure it out. You've got so. four minutes <laughs> to figure it out. So when people tune back in. It and, looks like nothing happened. Well, no. And they're yeah. like wondering why we're all red in the face and sweating. <laughs> <laughs> There's been an in-studio guest. Yeah, you can, you can, that's a, that's a somebody's eye is swollen because they, they got their chair taken away. Oh, that it's, you know that happened one show. This is before COVID when we did the Friday show, when Sammy Brown was uh, still a delegate, and Jason Barrett was still a delegate. They got into it over who was going to sit in what chair, and Sammy tried to take the chair that Jason always sat in, and the between break melee that ensued and it involved spilled coffee is all i want to tell you <laughs> oh about how about how that ended but it was, it was over who was going to sit in one chair so today we welcome in the berkeley county board of education president jackie long <clears throat> jackie good morning. good morning i feel like i need a seat belt <laughs> <laughs> you're up there and the vice president melissa power melissa good morning it's a pleasure to have you both seated comfortably in chairs that are <laughs> As long as I don't fall off, I'm good. If you do, I will pick you up. Okay, that's good. If you need the assistance. And you will make the open, guaranteed. Oh, I <laughs> promise you that. Now, you've also sent in some uh, some food here. Is, yeah. this, is this you or Ron? Uh, Ron picked it up. I purchased it. That was very kind of you. Yeah. Thank you to both both of you. And uh, Gilstrap, they, these folks are tempting your diet. Man. They are. Right, we they got are. Blueberry and butter rum today. Mm. Melissa, what do you got going on there? I'm just hoping you don't bring up turtles. <laughs> so am I. That was the whole show. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> not not going the turtle route. Not going Good. the turtle. However, we do have a, a question for you from Mr. Gilstrap to start the show oh, that boy. I promise is going to get us rolling. Oh, I want to no. say something before we even start. Yeah. Um, I want to put out the fire of the Facebook post that stated mm-hmm. that Dr. Sachs had a shower in his office and gets $50 a day for meals. Mm-hmm. That is the biggest bunch of <laughs> boo-hoo, foo-hoo. Hooey. I don't yeah, know where people get this stuff. That was ever Facebook. posted. Well, so, and, that's, and that's the interesting piece because y- you hear one person say it, um, you, you see it posted, and then you see people getting all upset about it, and it's like, it's not even true. You're wasting your energy on something that's not even true. But, but people, people get all worked up over it. And this was do. this was the question I was going to uh, oh, start sorry, the show with. Oh. That's okay. That, that's quite well, all right. So good. so we uh, answered it. That was the uh, content of the question was from the Facebook post about meal money and uh, private fifteen shower. dollars for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Private show. It's ludicrous. Are there are there in his contract? Are there any accommodations like that in the that None. have to do with anything other than the salary and the benefits that go with uh, retirement and health insurance? His his um, meal uh, reimbursement is just like anybody else that goes would go out of town on a trip. Correct. You turn in your mileage and you turn in uh, and you're paid the daily rate as the federal government pays for meals. That's, he gets just what everybody else gets. So where people get their information from credible sources that I read in that post, credible sources, um, don't know. As a brand new superintendent, it, even if he did have a shower in his office, that would have probably Maybe been there before he got there. Yeah, or from when we purchased the building. Y- yeah, right, right. Because to, to have that, to have someone state that it was supposedly written in the contract, I mean. I mean, I, it's the first thing I did was laugh. And then the second thing I looked at was all of the comments and the shares. And I'm like, oh, dear Lord. But, but you know, if you don't respond to that, Correct. then it takes on a life of its own, which Correct. it apparently already has. It has. And we don't respond to them most of the time. I think Melissa did a 
small post. I did a small post and on Damon my page. And Damon did, but I don't get on that because you know what angers people the most? Truth. Truth, and when you don't say anything. Well, but if you don't, well, yeah. but if you don't say anything, then it, you're accused of covering it up. Covering well, but you can't argue with somebody that won't argue. Well, you can't win an argument like that. That's for sure. But yeah. but it's. I, I think it's better to respond. My my thing is, and and my philosophy has always been, I'm going to put the truth out there. I won't argue with someone. If someone wants to argue with me, let them argue with me. But I'm not going to argue back. Um, if a question is, is reasonable, if a statement is reasonable, and you can tell that in, in typically in the comments or in the question. Um, you know, that's, that's fine. I, I, I've private mes messaged people that shared the post, um, yesterday and I had a, I had a, um, the conversation was interesting at first, but I think it ended, it ended up ending well. Um, and some, some clarity, I th I hope was provided to that individual. Well, on this particular issue, in this particular issue, I came in late in the game. I actually mm -hmm. saw, Melissa, I saw your post. Yep. And then I, I knew you were coming on the show, so uh -huh. I, I texted Jackie and said, what did I miss? And because I didn't know the context, it was sort of generic yeah. in, in, in what you wrote. So I then ended up, I ended up reading the, the original post, which was outrageous at its face. You know, if, if anything that's posted, ladies and gentlemen, if you read something on Facebook and at its face it seems <laughs> outrageous, it probably is not true. Right. So I, I read through it. It did seem outrageous. But then I read the comments that followed. Yeah. It's astonishing. That's yes. what bothers me the most and angers me the most. I, I cannot believe that people believe some of this stuff without investigating. No one asks a board None. member. Right. I messaged some people, as Melissa did, uh, but no one asked a board member that I'm aware of. Yeah, I, I actually was scrolling Facebook and saw it, and I'm like, what? <laughs> um, and I alerted everybody else to, to you know, on, on the board to it. I, I messaged, you know, folks to, to let them know, hey, look, this is out there. Um, and, and Mr. Wright was the first to, to put, a, put something on his page. Um, and I saw that he was, this is me being very real and honest, I saw that he was actually getting a couple people that would ask, but then also supported. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, he's right. He should be putting that out there and so should I. So I put my, you know, one on mine and you know, it sparked some conversations behind the scenes, but it's astonishing to your point, Mr. Gilstrap. I mean, like what in the world? The comments were just out of this world. And it, get, and it gets in the way of the positive things that should yeah, be, that be going, going on. Yes. And then it puts such a negative light onto him. He's just getting started <laughs> and it's so entirely rude that you've, you've, in a sense, slandered this individual before he's ever even gotten and started. And what he's done in the past three weeks has been absolutely It's astounding. been phenomenal. Yeah. What has he done in the last three weeks that's been well, phenomenal? Um, his knowledge of academics and um, the SBA and uh, working um, inside with the department. What's the SBA, Jackie? School Building Authority, I'm sorry. And... Um, He's getting ready to meet with all the principals. He's just, he's, he's just, um, he, he knows a little bit about everything, but his, his knowledge of academics is just phenomenal. And uh, as I said, this, uh, the school building authority. His communication, I'll, I want to say this, his communication has been stellar in my opinion. I, I have had more conversations with him, not from a, um, hey, what happened with this? Do you remember what that vote was for or anything like that? It was literally, hey, this is what um, I wanted to advise you about. This is what I'm working on. This is who, the conversation I've, I've just had. This is something that's been brought up. Um, it, 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 these, are, these are things that I have been asking for for two years, um, and I didn't have to ask it from him. He just did it, and I, that's huge. So I actually feel like in the last two weeks, I can be more of a board member and listen and take in everything that he's he's discovering and finding out and, and providing this information on. So you said two years, which means this predates the I've previous. I've been on the board for two years. This pre so the previous superintendent to this 
previous superintendent it was also not skilled in communication with the board is that what you're saying no, for, um, for me for you for personally me, i'm speaking for myself i'm not speaking for any Are other you board talking member about dr murphy no i'm talking about well he said the previous well, you, went, you said two years, so yeah. Ron Stevens was only one year. Two years. No, he, he was, was interim. Two full? One year. He was interim mm -hmm. for a short He was there the entire time you were mm -hmm. there? Oh, okay. For a short period yeah. of time. He was sworn in. He, was, um, he had a uh, year contract. He had a one-year contract, and how long did he serve interim? One year. One, uh, not a full year. Yeah, he's, he, he was sworn in the same day I was uh, when I got elected the first time. It didn't seem like a full I think it was two years. It okay, I didn't either. I thought it was actually yeah. about 18 months. But if you never I served with Dr. Murphy, I never then served with Dr. Murphy. that's the only way it could be. Yep, Dr. I've, Murphy did, right. was excellent at communicating. Hey, I want to talk about North Middle mm -hmm. because it has a new principal, uh, Kevin Pitsnoggle. He'll come on the program with Dr. Sachs uh, in August. We'll have right. him on the program Very good. Uh, together. And uh, we will have to get a shorter chair for Kevin, by the way. On one of these tall chairs, it's just not going to he work. He can sit directly on the floor, <laughs> as tall as he is. Very uh, tall. But I, I know, generally speaking, you folks don't do personnel decisions on the radio and such. But uh, Kevin's been in the school system mm -hmm. since he was in preschool, probably, or, or kindergarten and, and such. Jackie, uh, could you address that, uh, at least your thoughts on the hiring? I, I think it's a good pick. I think um, he works well with kids well with students and um, I think he's already a, a gung-ho on what's going on over there and, a, and uh, uh, immersed himself in uh, what the State Department wants us to do and working with Holly Klepner who's the uh, liaison between the Department of Ed and Berkeley County Schools she's over there full-time also so and there uh, there are many changes going on there and uh, that's exciting and I know he's really excited about being there so I think the kids will respect him and uh, just look up to him in more ways than one you have so. no choice mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so uh, is anything taking place over the summer with North Middle so that when they start the school year other than summer school I mean, so that when they start the school year they're up and running with further progress and compliance there's been lots going on over there um, from from my talk, speaking with Holly Kleppner, and I'm sure it's in much more since I've spoken to her last, but uh, the staff, um, many of the staff have been out of there all summer. They've been working on a different schedule, uh, different lunch, uh, how to um, establish a different lunch time, um, how to, um, with the schedule, what courses they think needs to be uh, they need to be immersed their students in more without with getting everything in that they have to do mm -hmm. and um, you know I think it's gonna be exciting I think this the staff will be excited about it and they've been to some training um, out of state and uh, working with the Department of Ed on some training so I, th I think it's gonna be good they're still working on the schedule so how do you know Melissa when the state's oversight of the school ends hmm. I think we're gonna have to take a look at how we're implementing the the goals that they've set out for us and how we how we get that started I, I know that we've got a running start to it um, and we're gonna keep abreast on it um, more so than what we were before just because of um, everything that's ha that has happened that was a learning experience for me um, and um, just monitor how things are, are progressing towards those goals that the state has set for us, but also our own internal goals. Our goal is to, is to get um, North back to a place um, and maybe even beyond where it ever has been before so that they are not just performing academically well, but that all students and staff feel safe in the school. John? Well, within Berkeley County, <clears throat> how much power take middle, North Middle School as the example um, and just stipulate that everything that was in that report was true, whether it is or not, just for the sake of argument. There are a lot of cultural issues. How much power does a new principal have to change those things? Well, I, I think uh, he can change the dynamics there just by uh, what the, some of the different programs that they implement and, and just... Academic programs? Uh, well, I could work academics and working with uh, maybe bullying and discipline and 
all those together, which, um, you know, impact academics. So I, I think he will do well there. Um, just um, just him, his personality, uh, how he works with students, um, and and his interaction with kids. I'm not, I'm not comfortable speaking about him specifically. That makes it too personal. I mean, just kind of in general for the, the position of principal. If, if, we can, if we find the ideal principal for every single school, do we fix the majority of the problems in each school? No. I mean, the, in my opinion, a principal is the team leader, but you have to have a good team under you. And if you have, and we keep going back to this, if you have um, half of the staff that are uncertified educators, um, they're doing the best they can, then, you know, you still have issues. Now, um, some of those individuals have become certified, so we're working on that. I think Holly told me nine, maybe I'm dreaming that, but I thought she said nine of them had I received their certifications. I, I agree with, with Jackie, but I also want to extend that even to parents. Um, we just reviewed, um, well, received, I haven't had a chance to review the entire was it like a three inch binder of yeah. um, school surveys for, for the 23, 24 school year. But um, there's a lot of schools that lack or appear to lack uh, parental involvement. And one thing I, I will say is this, if you have parents who are actively involved with their child's education, whether that's volunteering in the schools, um, having constant communication with the, the teachers and the, and the other staff members, um, whatever that might look like for that particular family, because each family is different. Some parents have the ability to volunteer, some, parent, some parents don't because they're working. But if you have parental involvement or even grandparental involvement, mm -hmm. the dynamic for the school can fundamentally change as well. So it's not just the principal and the staff, it's also the, it, the parents getting involved with their child's education and supporting not only their child, but also the teachers and the staff. Well, and we had many parents that, uh, from looking at this climate survey, and it was both a climate survey from the state and mm -hmm. the county, that don't bother to fill anything out or don't, don't, you don't know what they're thinking. You never see them in the school, many of them. And they don't bother to fill a climate survey out, so you don't know their feelings. Um, so as Melissa said, the lack of parental involvement is just massive, and and that affects many schools. Uh, I think the principals do their very best to communicate and and try to get parental involvement by having after school events, weekend events, things like that. But. Um, how about parental involvement to the degree of helping them with their homework and reviewing the homework before it comes back in? I think that's lacking. Is that lacking as well? In my opinion. Well, I mean, if you don't have... If you don't parent, have... A, I mean, if... Uh, and, and that goes back to my earlier comment. Parental involvement can look different for each right. entire family. Yeah. And parental involvement includes, can include anything from volunteering, helping with homework, sending messages to the teacher to find out maybe, hey... Johnny is, is having issues with fractions. Have you noticed the same thing? And, or, or vice versa, the, the, the you know, parent is receiving a message from the, the teacher and then the parent actually responding to the teacher. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not just um, one area for parental involvement. It's all encompassing. Well, um, I had a friend, I apologize, oh, I wanna no, say this ahead. one thing. I had a friend tell me years ago that her view was her kids were sent to school for the, for the school to um, uh, do all the teaching. And if her kids didn't learn, that's the school's fault. And I'm sitting there going, you were, you were the, you're the parent. You are the parent, not the teacher, not the principal, you. So if there's an issue with your kids learning, we, you might need to take a step back and take a look at what's going on and you need to be involved. You need to figure out what's going on. You're not a parent from 
4 p.m. when the kids get off the bus to 8 a.m. the next morning when they get on the bus. You're parent 24-7. Not to mention you're the chief educator of your child, especially the first five years. Well, and and when a teacher calls home, if they actually can get a live body, that that person says, I sent them to school, you you have them now, you deal with them. And then they, there's typically the same parents that get upset when we have them, you know, there's there's an issue in school. You go to the parents and say, hey, you know, Johnny hit Sally and my Johnny doesn't hit. <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> we need to have a different conversation here. We need to admit that, you know, sometimes our kids do bad and sometimes our kids do good. And sometimes our kids are just somewhere in between. Matt Harvey. That's okay. What do you got? Um, my kid never does wrong. Yeah. By the way. No, I'm kidding. Uh-huh. Um, and you're the prosecutor. I know, okay. I know. Okay. I know. Just making sure. Yeah. Um, no, it, it, I, it, these are, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, but as, as individual board members, I, I'm sure you have limited authority to, to check up on these issues yourself. So ha- with North Middle, what is your plan to kind of keep an eye on them to make sure they're following through with their plan? Is it going to be through as a board individually or through the new superintendent? Well, I think. For me, it would be the new superintendent, Holly Kleppner, the principal, and our visits to North. I mean, do you take, as a board, do you take visits to site schools? uh, Separately. Uh, Now, Mr. Murphy and I went together a lot. Oh, that's Uh, good. Yeah, uh, but we... We visit. We we visit many many schools. We tried to hit them all in T- our tenure. Typically, what we have to do, and and I I could hear I, I could hear the the wheels turning. We are because of Open Meetings Act. If more than two of us were to be right. in the same location right. reviewing the same thing at the same time, we would have had to announce that several days in advance, provided an agenda. Um, and declared that that's we're not mm-hmm. voting, we're just visiting, and allow the public to be present while we are doing that. So, this is where there's a little bit of a tug and pull here, where we're you know we do it independently, um, and you know or just two of us, so that we don't come in anywhere close to um, any potential question whatsoever. In studio with Jackie Long, president of the BOE, and Melissa Power, vice president of the BOE. Yesterday, we had Maria Bird uh, from St. Joe's Inn. They praised the cooperation of the public school system with a private school in terms of uh, regarding testing of kids who might have special needs and I such. I heard that interview. You got some, yeah. good, you got some good props on well, that. Well, yeah, and we have always um, been involved with St. Joe. At one time, we transported our students. So... Um, it's always been a very cooperative um, working environment with them. Do you have any concerns as they move to a private high school uh, arrangement? No. I, no, I wish them well. So I think Faith Christian is doing the same thing. So. Mm-hmm. You are less than a month away from the start of the school year. Any idea what your enrollment numbers will be this year, Jackie? Uh, no, it could be less because of the Hope Scholarship issue. But I do know from what Dr. Schooley presented to us last night, um, right now uh, we'll have 170 perm subs. Um, How's that compared to last year? Less. That's good. Yeah, less. Oh, good. Less. Yeah. Um, so right now, there are 71 open service personnel positions. 50 of them are aides. Uh, for professional, there's 59 open positions and 42 teacher. Those 42 of those are teachers, and 20 of them are special ed. And that was at 7:24 yesterday. July 24. Yes, um, but we are. A lot happens between now and the first day of school, and even a couple weeks after. And sometimes we don't get those positions filled, especially when it comes to those aid positions that we really appreciate the legislature uh, giving those positions, but trying to fill them is difficult. In Eastern Panhandle especially. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have so many open positions, and I just wanted to give a shout-out to our HR department because I, they have they go through – so much and if you look at how many personnel decisions we have to make i mean within what not even 10 days we had well close to 200 decisions that that were presented to us last night thank you both for coming in colin has something special for you that's about to flash across the tv screen it's racing turtles you mentioned turtles (laughs) earlier in the thank you jackie (laughs) melissa thank you for the goodies thank you and thank you so much for coming in absolutely yeah
It's 9 o'clock. This is Talk Radio, WRNR Martinsburg and TV 10. We're talking Youth Fair next. That's, uh, what, about a week away now. <laughs> 